Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today, uh, thanks to the generosity of the French Ministry of the Interior, we have a pair of super rare prototype FAMAS commandos to take a look at. Uh, the FAMAS was never actually issued in a short-barreled variant, and it's rather unusual among military bullpup rifles in that regard. The L85 they made a short-barreled version, the Steyr AUG they made a short-barreled version, the FAMAS they never did, except for prototypes like these. So uh, the idea of most bullpup rifles was to combine the functionality of the infantry rifle and the submachine gun in a single package. And the hope, the intention, was that you'd end up with a gun that had the ballistic capabilities of the rifle, but in a submachine gun size. And if you do that right, you have a gun that's the same size as your submachine gun, therefore you don't need to make something shorter, because the submachine gun was short enough. Now for the French, that was true. They were perfectly happy with the FAMAS in its standard length. However, they did go ahead and offer uh, Saint-Étienne, which became Giat, uh, offered these guns for international commercial sale, or international military and security sale. And so they introduced a bunch of other variations on them to try and encourage sales, and one of those was to cut the thing down. So what we have here are two different versions of the gun with about an 11 and a quarter inch barrel, plus a little bit of a flash hider. That's like 285 millimeter barrel. Um, not quite half, but close to half the length of a standard FAMAS barrel. So uh, we're going to take a quick look at these up close, because not only are they prototype short barreled versions, they're also G2 versions, meaning that they feed from AR-15 magazines. So here is our experimental short barreled rifle compared to a standard, or mostly standard. This is actually also a prototype, but it has a standard configuration to it. Uh, a standard G2 rifle. So the standard G2 had a barrel length of just under 19 inches. You can see that it is substantially longer than this guy. And in order to make the gun this short, they also had to cut the handguard, uh, and, well, upper and lower handguards down. They got rid of the bipod legs, because of course with a little submachine gun style version like this, you don't need a bipod on it, there's no benefit to that, and there's no room for it either. So being prototypes, uh, they're experimenting with more than just barrel length. You can see two different configurations of uh, handguards here. This is basically the standard G2 style, open so that you can operate it with mittens, and then it has a hand stop here at the front. So you would hold this like that, and that'll protect your hand, keep you from getting your hand in front of the, the muzzle. This guy is the exact same barrel length, a slightly different design of the upper handguard here, because instead of having hand stop, they built a vertical front grip into this one. So you still have the whole hand guard to use this with mittens, uh, but now you've got a vertical grip instead of a horizontal one. In addition, there is some interesting experimentation going on with these rifles in regards to their sights. So this one has basically a standard FAMAS rear sight with a couple of apertures that you can open and close, a precision aperture there, and the larger kind of standard aperture, and you can open them both up, both up for a ghost ring. But then they have, instead of the standard narrow blade, they have a ringed front post here that you would line up. So this makes for a faster, if somewhat less precise, sight picture than a standard rifle but the exact sort of thing that you would have for a submachine gun style of weapon. This one, however, has a totally different style of sight. On this one you've got just a shallow V ramp for a rear sight, and a, just a really fragile looking uh, peg for a front sight. So that gives this interesting sight picture. It's actually better than I expected it would be when I first took a look at it. Um, I'm not sure it's my preference. Uh, it's a little tricky to get a good quick sight picture. These, This pin and the, the notch back here kind of tend to blend together. I think my preference would be for sort of the ghost ring style, like we've got on this one. Gives you a sight picture more like that. Uh, this is kind of what that sight picture actually looks like to the human eye instead of the camera. You don't get quite, you know, you don't, that's not quite what it looks like uh, from where the camera is, but I think I'd prefer this style uh, to the, the more open one. A uh, quick look at the markings here. This has a standard G2 marking, except it has an A series 
uh, serial number. The standard G2s were M prefix, and the A's indicate prototype rifles, or special production rifles, uh, where M was the Navy contract. So this is the 408. They made, it was less than a thousand, I want to say it was seven or eight hundred um, A series rifles, and those would comprise all different configurations. Some very short prototypes like this, some going out the other direction to sniper long barreled versions, and everything in between. Now the one mechanically interesting difference between this and the standard G2 is that the bolt carrier has been lightened. And this was done on both of these short barreled prototypes. And the reason for this is that the shorter barrel actually robs some energy from the system, because the bullet is not achieving as high of a velocity and it's leaving the barrel quicker, you have less gas pressure and less time uh, that that gas pressure is acting on the bolt. Um, and because this is a delayed blowback system, that has a direct impact on the gun's ability to function. So, so if we push this pin, we can pull off the butt stock, and then we can pop this out. So here is our short barreled bolt carrier, and here is a standard bolt carrier assembly. So they actually took out a fair amount of material there. So these were never, as I said, sold commercially. They tried, uh, but they didn't ever get any contracts for them. They were never issued by the French military, and these are a couple of the few existing prototypes. So it's pretty cool to take a look at them and see things like the different versions of sites that they were experimenting with, and that sort of thing. It'd be super cool to have one, but the next best thing is being able to take a look at it here today it to you guys. Um, a big thanks to the Ministry of the Interior for the opportunity. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.